Hello, good evening. It's Erica here for Me To You Paper Crafts. Welcome to Case the Caddy. I do this every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This is where I pick a project out of one of our current catalogs and reproduce it for you. Now, I don't always have all the products, so there are sometimes substitutions, but that's what casing is all about. It stands for copy and share everything or copy and selectively edit. So sure, if you don't have that specific uh, embellishment, swap it out for something else. If you don't have that color ribbon, swap it out for something else. So you can do what you want. There's no rules, really. Um, so we will get started. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you my desktop. And we're actually going to case something out of the... Um, out of the uh, celebration brochure. So remember, celebration is going on right now in Canada. That means that with a minimum $60 order, you get to pick a product for free that happens to be inside this little mini catalog. So I'm going to show that to you when I switch to my desktop, which I'm going to do right now. There we go. So this is the brochure, the celebration brochure. And um, as well as the... Um, the mini catalog, you get lots of samples in the in the mini um, brochure as well. So today we're going to play with this um, this free paper that you can earn, and so it happens to coordinate with the Trusty Tools um, uh, stamp set here. Here it is. Here, Trusty Tools. It's perfect for Father's Day coming up, or any but or any masculine birthday or just anybody that you know who loves to work with wood or likes to work on cars or whatever. There's lots of different tools in here. Painters or any kind of crafts person. Could be a woman. Uh, I have women friends who build little houses. My sister in particular, she loves to work with wood. So um, it's not exclusive just to men. Now, what's fantastic about this is that you get the stamp set itself, photopolymer stamp set, plus you get a set of dies that cut out most of the pieces here. So here are the dies. So you get this cool um, sort of pegboard idea uh, that you'll see in people's workshops where they actually have clips in here and then they hang up their hammers or their wrenches or whatever. And then there's lots of different tools here. Now, the fantastic thing about is that this set coordinates with paper that happens to be in the mini celebration brochure. So you get this for free, the paper. And um, this is telling me I already have two packages of that. But you get this paper. And what's really cool is that the dies will cut out a lot of the pieces from the paper. So I'm just going to show you for an example. I spent time, I usually do this, when I have designer series paper with a set of dies, I spend the time to cut out lots of pieces. So now this is ready for all of my card making. Um, I've got lots to choose from here. So I just took the time to do that. And um, I don't mind fussy cutting at all. I find it quite relaxing actually. So I'm going to show you. I've used quite a bit of the paper, but I'm going to show you the paper. Here's the paper. So this is what you can use the dies for. So as you can see from this piece, I cut out paintbrush here. And then um, there's another sheet of paper where you can cut out a lot of the tools as well. So I just go through and I cut out. See, here's all the paintbrushes I took out of this sheet here. And these, uh, there's no die for this, but I'm going to cut this out by hand. And I will cut out a whole bunch of other things by hand so that I have more tools to play with. And some of the other paper is really cool because um, it's two-sided, of course. So this is, um, these are a bunch of hammers on this sheet here. And then on the back, you've got your little nuts and bolts, which is really cool. You see, I've already started working through this paper. And then this sheet here, this is another piece with some screws. 
Um, and then it's got this paper, which is really cool because it's unique to a toolbox. Those red toolboxes with the metal drawers. So you can build your own scene of a toolbox. Here's another sheet with, uh, well, that's actually the same sheet with all of the different tools that you can uh, hand cut. And then you've got Lost Lagoon is one of the main colors. And look at that. You've got a whole bunch of rulers that you can cut out. And then you've got another pegboard sheet. These are screwdrivers patterns. And then this is just sort of like a, it's just kind of a muted sort of pattern in, um, I think this is gray granite color. So yeah, lots of fun papers here. Oh, there's another one in here with um, graph paper here. So when you're planning your little birdhouse project, you would use graph paper. And here's the other sheet with lots of different tools. So there are a lot of dies that cut out the, you've got a hammer die, you've got a die to cut out this wrench, you have a die to cut out this um, drill, tape measure, lots of fun papers. So there you go. There is your pack of paper. Lots of fun to play with. Okay, so tonight I decided in the catalog, in the little brochure, there's a cute little mini slimline card. Let me just get rid of my paper here. Set that aside. Okay, so this is the card we're going to be making tonight. Just a really cute little mini slim line. Now, I have a variety of different sized slim line cards that I make. The one I'm going to show you tonight is a mini one, and I'm going to also show you how to make a coordinating envelope. So for the envelope, you can use designer series paper so that you could make a matching envelope for this. Or I often just use a very good, almost um, 80 pound um, copy paper. It's a very smooth copy paper. That's often what I do for my envelopes. I have made envelopes from designer series paper as well, which is lots of fun. So we're gonna make an envelope tonight. So here's an example of where you could make the chest of drawers in here. And I'm just gonna to pop to my other desk for a second because I wanna show you that I made a little toolbox. So I was searching through the internet and I found a lady who actually made this little toolbox. And so I copied her design and made this cute little toolbox. Isn't that adorable? And then you just put another piece of cardboard, cardstock in the middle, and then you just glue a bunch of these tools that I had cut out from the paper. Isn't that cute? Hi, Carol, how are you? Thank you. Yeah, I think that's really, really cute. Okay, so um, let's get started with our project. Okay, it's going to be a fast, fast little card to make. I'll give you all of the measurements. So this is a, um, a six by six inch piece of, of um, sorry. Is it six by six? I think I'm wrong. Six by Yes, it is. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a six by six piece. This is Lost Lagoon. So it's a mini slim line. Okay. Um, and then I chose to use this designer series paper here. And this I cut to um, five and three quarters by three and three quarters. Because, of course, I folded this in half at three inches. Okay. So now you've got a three by six card. And so the DSP is five and three quarters by uh, two and three quarters. Okay. Now, what I found really interesting about this, let me just set this aside. What I found interesting about this is that they've taken the designer series paper and then they've actually cut out a pattern using a die. Now, we have lots of dies that you could do the same thing with. Um, you don't want a die that's going to cut out the shape of the die. You want a die that sort of doesn't cut out the um, outline. Okay. So in this set, 
for example, where are my dies over here? This die here doesn't have an edge to it. So it doesn't cut this rectangle out. It just puts an imprint in. So those are the kinds of dies that you're looking for. Um, I was working on a recent, um, a recent set um, where again, there was a die in there that just created a pattern. Um, so you could do that. And I've done that on plain cardstock, but I, I don't remember doing it on designer series paper. So that's what intrigued me about this card is that it's actually creating this design um, on designer series paper itself. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this I'm gonna cut this a few times down this sheet to create that pattern, okay? So I'm just going to put a piece of my purple tape on here to hold the die in place, and I'm gonna run it through the machine. Okay, so see what you get. I've run that through and I'm going to run it through again. I'm lining up the dots so that I get a consistent pattern here. So there we have it again, and then I'm going to do it one more time right here. Now this die has become a messy little die. And then it leaves behind a lot of little tiny pieces from the holes. So you have to do quite a bit of tidying after each pass. Okay, that should do it. Check this out. This was a gift certificate. So this was hung on a rack um, in the drugstore. And then the gift certificate was at the bottom. And so I kind of just snapped it off. And so I ended up with this. And it has become the best thing for cleaning off my cutting plate. Really cool little tool. OK, so let's take this off now. OK, so look what we have now. We've got this DSP with a bunch of tools and it's mimicking the pegboard. Okay, and all we're gonna do, told you it's a simple card, is we're gonna be mounting that on the card base. Now you wanna make sure all the dots are out. I can see a few dots um, still in here that need cleaning out. Let me just get my pokey tool here. 
it's been a great die. They typically just all fall out. That's a stubborn one. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm going to glue this on here. So I'm going to just put a few little dots of glue. Let's get my glue going here. And I'm just going to put in a few random little dots here. Glue this down. Now, there isn't really a right or a wrong side to this. I guess it just depends how you want to see the tools. So I'm just going to glue this on here like that. Okay. And the dots don't release very well from here. So you have to take the time before you run it through again and, and poke through all of the holes, unless you still have the dye brush handy, which I do. I have it somewhere. Um, but yeah, don't forget to clean out your dye before you use it again. Okay, that's it. Now, what we need next is we're going to do some stamping. We are going to stamp a wrench. So let me just grab a scrap paper. This is crushed curry. And I'm going to grab this here is the wrench. Okay. And I'm going to put this on my longer block here. And it is also stamped in crushed curry. Okay, now you could certainly dress this up if you wanted to. I've just noticed I've made a mistake on this card, and I apologize for that. But if you look at the card, they have cut it on the diagonal here. See that? See, it's been cut on the diagonal, and um, and it's it's left a little gap in there just so that you can see the cardstock behind it. And I forgot to do that. Okay, so. Um, I noticed it when I was looking at the card and I thought yeah that's kind of cool too it's almost as if I took the saw and cut it ha ha so let's cut this out I see more people have joined give me a second and I'll have a look at who's here I think I saw Judy Now we have a, a demonstrator event coming up and I know both Carol and Judy, you're coming to that event. Have you guys started to work on your card or project for the buffet? I have not. Okay, so there's our little wrench. So try and remember that um, when you're creating your cards, not everything has to be stamped using our white cardstock, and it doesn't have to be stamped in black. You could easily stamp it in a different color. Um, not every project has to have this realistic look to it. Okay, now there is a circle cut here. Now you have a choice. You could use these stylish shapes and do this circle here. 
but to sort of replicate the saw, I thought I would change those and use the deckled circles. They kind of look like a sawed edge. So let's pick one of these circles out. Let's see, that's way too big. Let's take this one here. I'm just trying to mimic the uh, project in the catalog. So I'm going to use um, my other color I took out is gray granite. So this is that and the gray granite is right here. So So yeah, these deckled circles make a perfect little saw's edge. So here's our little saw. Okay, so we're going to put that on there. And then there's a greeting. Thank you. We have thank you in here. So I'm going to take that and grab a stamp. And this is done on white in this is Poppy Parade. Now, this is, um, okay, separated. So I have lots of little strips of white paper in here. Let me just find a size that will work. That's too thick, too wide. And that's going to be, I think, too narrow. That's a little bit more narrow. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to stamp this in Poppy Parade. Hi, Lori. The toolbox. Yes, you could fill it with goodies for sure. Um, you could just leave out that center piece. I think I smeared that. No, I didn't. Okay. So let me grab my scissors. And okay, I wanted that on an angle. I didn't do that for you. I'm going to do it again. Okay, because I need to cut an angle on here. We might actually have to stamp this twice. Yes, this isn't working. Okay, hang on. Let's just do this. I think I'm going to trim it. Yes, it needs trimming. Okay, there's thank. And maybe you and it's cut on the same angle, that's why I did it again.
There we go. Okay, so we're going to glue this circle. It's pretty well in the center, I think. Now, another thing you could do with this is that you could emboss it. It would be cool if we had a circular um, embossing folder. I don't think we do have anything that would make some rings. Let's see. Let's just go quickly through my um, just to see. I don't think we have anything like that. I'm thinking of one of them that is the um, no, it's dark. No, it's not that. No, I don't have one. I thought I had something that had circles on it. I might be thinking of an old folder. So we're just going to leave it the way it is. So let's stick this on here like that. Okay. And then we've got our little wrench. And then the thank you I'm going to put on mini dimensionals. So let's just pull these out. I said it was a simple card. Okay, so then we're just going to do thank you. There we go. That's kind of cute, I think. Now, there are some really cool little nuts and bolts, a nuts and bolts stamp and a die. So you could cut out some nuts and bolts to add to the card. You could put a few up here maybe. Um, okay, I want to show you the envelope. Now, on the inside, of course, your basic white, if you want to do white on the inside, would be, again, the same size as the DSP on the outside. So that is two and three quarters by um what do i say five and three quarters because it's six inches so five and three quarters by two and three quarters uh white on the inside and then you could just stamp some of the other tools on there i want to show you the envelope now so this again is a three by six inch sized card so i'm going to take let me just clean off some stuff here I'm being very messy tonight, I'm just throwing everything on my floor. Because my floor is already a disaster zone. Okay, so this is eight and a half by 11. And what you want to cut it to is a seven and a quarter inch square. So let me just make some room on my side of my desk here because I want to pull out my ruler. Okay, so seven and a quarter. So I'm going to go this way first. Okay, seven and a quarter. Okay, seven and a quarter. You're starting off with a square piece, okay? And now you are going to do some scoring. 
So on one side, you're going to score at half an inch on each side. So I'm going to use the half inch over here on the right hand side of my trimmer. So half an inch. Now make sure you move your cutter out of the way. And I'm just going to score. Be careful you don't score too hard because the paper is not quite as thick as our designer series paper. So half an inch on each side. Okay, and then we're going to score at two inches from each side, the opposite sides. So two inches. And two inches. Okay. All right, so the half inch pieces are the top and the bottom, or no, sorry, they're the sides of the of the envelope. You'll see what I mean when I do it, okay? And then you're going to fold up on those other two horizontal lines. Okay, so this becomes your envelope this way. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're going to cut off the four rectangles in the corners. You're going to cut those off. And you're going to wedge in. So I'm going to wedge here. Okay, and then I'm going to do this side. Doesn't matter what order you do them in. I don't even know why I turned my paper around. I just did. And then I'm going to wedge in. And then I'm going to cut up. Now you need good lighting to see the score lines. Cut up there. And I'm going to wedge in. And then I'm going to cut up here. Now, you can make this envelope out of cardstock, too, if you want. So if you want to match your cardstock colors, you can do that. Okay, so you're taking off those four corner rectangles. Okay. Now, what I like to do, oh, I hope I kept it here. No, I think I took it away. I was using my corner rounder the other day. I'm going to go grab it again. Because I like to round my corners, at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to put this in here and put this in here. And I'm going to do the top like so. Okay. Now these are the same um, same size. See, it doesn't matter which way you turn the envelope. Okay. So now when I trimmed this side up, I went too deep. So um, you just have to ignore that. Maybe I'll do this one as the bottom. I want the edges even. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to grab some tear and tape. Um, you can use glue, but this paper is quite thin, and I don't want the glue to sort of like uh, warp the paper. So, and I like to use, um, a 
a ruler, if I could find my ruler, I can't find my ruler now. I had it out. Oh, I'll just use my die. That's going to be perfect. Let me take these purple bits off here. Yeah, anything with a sharp edge works great. So I'm just going to take my die here. I'm going to rip that. Sometimes when I rip it um, just with my finger, it rips the paper. Okay. So I'm going to take this off. And take this off. And then you're going to close up the side flaps. And then you're going to just... Close that up. Okay. Now I didn't do a very good job maybe with my measuring. I'm kind of in a rush, so I have to do a little bit of trimming here. There we go. You know, I don't, you know, you don't need to be that picky. Okay. And then there's your envelope. So when you take your little card, and I often turn my card upside down because the bits get caught on the flap when I'm putting it in the envelope. So I will just slide it in upside down. And there's your, your envelope. Now, if you're going to give this as a, say, a set of cards, um, you would put a piece of tear and tape on here so that your recipient can then rip it off and then use the envelope. Or at the time when you are going to use the envelope, you would uh, rip it off. I usually just use glue when I'm addressing my envelopes. I just use, I just use tape runner on my handmade envelopes. There we go. So that adhesive is ready for the next time when I want to address it. Okay, and then I would decorate my envelope. I did not do a good job here trimming even. There we go. Oh. It's being really stubborn. I can't get the scissor, the scissors edge in there. Good enough. And then I would just decorate my flap. Okay, so I'm going to review the measurements for you if you wanted to take note of that. So this is a three finished card size is three by six. Okay. And the envelope is you're going to cut a piece of paper seven and a quarter inches squared. And then on one, two sides, you're going to score at half an inch on two sides and then at two inches from the opposite sides. OK, and then fold them all up and then cut out the four rectangles to make your little mini slimline envelope. There you go. What did you think of that? It's nice to have an envelope that fits a handmade card that you've made. Hi, Carol. You're popping in for a peek. Yeah, so let me show you the toolbox again. This was very fun to make. And Lori, you're right. You could leave out that center. There's a center piece in here. And you could put treats in there. And just put the tools along the back wall and the front wall and put some treats in there. They'd fit some little mini chocolate bars in there for sure. Yeah, I had a lot of fun making it. But like I said, I spent time cutting out all of the pieces from the DSP. Those that didn't have dies for them, then I just hand cut them out. And now I have a bunch of cutouts ready to go. So there you go, ladies. That is the project for tonight. I hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy the rest of your week. Tomorrow is Friday. Yes, sorry. And then um, I'm going to a, I'm spending um, a couple of days with some girl, really close girlfriends of mine who live here in Victoria and we're celebrating my birthday. So we're going to, we're actually having a sleepover. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm 70 and I'm having a sleepover. Oh my gosh, but it should be lots of fun. Thanks for all your good wishes on my Facebook page. And uh, have a super week. And I will see you Monday morning for another Mojo Monday. Thanks, everyone. Good night.